Hey guys, and today we're going to talk about a, a tool called Sprite Write and how it can be used to create a CSS Sprite. Now, before we start, I just want to say a couple of things. I've got some major English coursework due in for tomorrow, and I've just got a couple of fine points to check. So I haven't really got time to, to be doing this video, but the reason I'm doing it is because something cropped up in my school um a, a website that I'm building for my, for my school computing course so that's why I'm doing this video because I need to I need to organize it anyway so I figured I'd just show you guys in a video I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna tell you that basically what we're gonna be doing is using a specific GUI tool to create CSS sprites. If you don't know what CSS sprites are, or even if you don't know the benefits of them, go and Google it real quick and then come back to this video because I'm not going to be really going over that because there isn't time. Well, let's let's uh, uh, leave that for a second and just look at the example we're going to be using. Got it popped open in Chrome here, and and this this is the website that I'm building for my school project. Um, you can build it on anything you want. So I'm just doing web design and development. Part part of the criteria dictates that you have to have a variety of images in your work, and you also have to have a variety of multimedia elements. To integrate both of those. I, d I decided I was going to ha have a audio transcript of each one of these articles and that and that um the buttons to get the audio transcript was going to be an image so that's basically what what we're going to be dealing with the 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 image has multiple states which would previously have commanded two two, two images that's bad for several reasons um firstly the there's the page lo load slower because there's more there's more to load two images instead of the technique we're going to be doing which is just to load one image and several other things like that so th let's look at the code we're going to be or oh, that we're dealing with to create that Pretty standard um, static HTML page. We've got it's HTML5, that's whatever, and it's um, got a, st a style sheet we're going to be referencing in a minute. The shift script for HTML5, um, we've got navigation, and this is the important bit. Th this is that link, it doesn't link any. Anyway, at the moment, but it will do. It's got a class of audio that we need to flag it, and that's all that's in the HTML. So that if a if a screen reader comes to this or something that doesn't doesn't um re read the CSS, that's all it's going to stay. So we're going to remain nice and accessible. Um, so we're going to be using this GUI tool called. Sprite right to combine two images into one and create the CSS sprite. Now I again this this is really important. This is not an endorsement for the software. I just won this in a giveaway and this will be kind of the first time I'm using it so I wanna see how quick it really is and I, I figured I'd do it on camera see if that can provide any value to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Sprite Right and we're going to create a new document. Let's just pick some arbitrary size, 512 by 512 sounds good. Um, and let's drag in the um, two images that we want to co combine into one. We've got... Uh, 
that was a remnant of a previous time which I tried to do this so let's get rid of that um we've got the normal image and a hover image L like I said previously the, the these would have been separate graphics but not not with this right so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna uh, get them both and just kind of dr drag them over here it's gonna put them on the canvas for us now that's done if we click um, let, let's see we see the um, there's all tons of this transparent space around and we um, we can't see our other image so to get it exactly right we're gonna let the computer do it for us and we're just gonna click the pack button that should um, get this together and f find the most appropriate uh, combination for our two images in sprite and now let's export them so it should be pretty easy um let's go and do um we'll just call it sprite And what compression level do we want to use? We'll just use the default for now, I think. Um, oh, yeah, we'll use the the default. We're just gonna click save and export. There we go. So we've we've got um our image in there. That's a combination of those two states. So how are we now gonna um put that image as our button? Well, um we've got a target and a hook um in our CSS for it, which is the class of audio which we can latch on to in our CSS um, so we're just going to make a new section for it here class of audio we're going to say Just way Oh, actually no. Let's not do that because part of what Sprite Ride does is it generates CSS for us. So we're, we're trying to hurry up as much as we can here. So let's use it CSS. We can do that by oh, opening up this little drawer here and it'll, it'll give us some suggested CSS and um, if we click on any one of the images it'll it'll tell us what what to use that image so um, uh, let's the height and width are going to be important and display block So let's copy all of that, and that's actually for the hov hover state, the bottom one, the right one. So we're going to copy all of that. Oh, 
Oh, actually, no. No, we'll, we'll leave that for now. So we're just going to say anything with a cost of audio. Has background of um, this graphic, the sprite PNG. So we're gonna say we have a background of that. So that's in there, okay. Um, we're also gonna say no repeat because that's the whole point of a CSS file. We want, we want to limit the size. Um, we're going to say display block because we need to be able to set height, height and width and normally anchor links are um, display in line and to be able to set height and width we need it to be display block so we're going to say display block and because it's because the image has got uh, the text in it, but we still need the text to be there for screen readers. We're just gonna hit the text off the page for visual users, and we're gonna say something like text indent and we're using M's on this site so. I'm just going to say minus n 9 million or something M so we just never get we we never see that text unless we've got CSS turned off now we need to know the specific height and width which is where um, Sprite right needs to come back in so we're doing we're doing the normal state at the moment, so we're gonna click on the normal state button, and tell, we're gonna get it to tell us what the height and width is. Um, so the width is two hundred seven and the height eighty two, and the background position is the default. Because we're using M's, we're gonna divide those values by ten. Um. So, width equals 26.7 M, height eight point two M. And just to be super sure, we're going to say um, overflow hidden so we don't see any of the overflow from the text indent. Um, and I think that'll be about it, but we, we are going to set that. The background position is the default in this case zero zero because the background position is what's going to change. 
Um, so we're going to say when we hover over it, you should probably do focus as well, but I'm just kind of hurry things up for this case. All we're going to change is the background. Position value. And that is going to be. Oops, we forgot to um, specify. Hover. So, what's that background position going to be when we hover? Well, we want we want this bottom one this time. So, um, let's select that. It's the same height and width, obviously, but the the background position this time, instead of being zero zero, is going to be minus eighty four pixels. We can we can watch that change as we click. It starts off zero zero and then minus 84 so it's automatically calculated those values for us anyway we're gonna say um, and remember we're working in M's so we're gonna divide the, those value, values by 10 and which is gonna result in Zero minus eight point four M, and hopefully, uh, I will just check the values once again. If we did everything right, we should have um, our hover state in there. Let's go over to Chrome. On refresh, let's just clear things up a little bit here. Go over to Chrome and refresh. We start off with our normal state and then we go over to our hover state. But it looks like there's there is a bit of a problem. We've still got that text showing up there. So, uh, what did we do wrong there? I wonder. I wonder if this value is just too crazy that it can't cope with it. Refresh. That text is no longer there, and when we when we hover over, the spike works fine. And when I calculated those values by myself, th there was an awkward shift, but we don't we don't have that anymore. So uh, that's kind of nice. So we've we've accomplished our goal. We've we've created a CSS sprite, and those. What was now what was once two HTTP requests is now only one, so that can uh, only only be a good thing. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. More videos to come soon, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye guys.